God is so good. <laughs> so, so, so good. Okay, it is still Monday. <laughs> I'm not doing my podcast tomorrow because I am flying out, heading to Austin. So excited for two, two talks, not speeches, two talks, uh, one for the Diocese of Austin and another one for Legata. So it's going to be crazy tomorrow. And I have to tell you what just happened to me. So this morning was a little crazy with prayer. My brother spent the night last night. He was up early. We were chatting. I knew my prayer time wasn't going to happen as normal. And I accepted that. And then my morning wasn't normal either. I was going with the flow. And I thought there's no way I can get to mass around 8, 830. So I decided I was going to travel for 40 minutes to go to a parish for noon mass. Actually, 12, 10, 12, 15 is when they usually start usually. <laughs> Do you remember when I tell you when you go out to masstimes.org that you've got to go to the website, look at the bulletin for the most updated information? I just got burned by that. I drove there and nobody was there. What, does God not happen on President's Day? I don't quite understand what the deal is. But there was an adoration chapel there. What is an adoration chapel? It's a separate building in this instance. Sometimes it's attached to the church, but this was a separate building, and that is where Jesus is. You remember the Holy Communion wafer in the Catholic Church is consecrated by the ordained hands of the priest. Only the priest can do this in the sacrament of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. And then when it turns into Jesus, called transubstantiation, he then gets put inside a monstrance, which looks like a big gold sun on a pedestal. Monstrance means to show. So Jesus himself is in this chapel. And so I thought, I'm going to go sit with him. If you recall from my previous podcast, I was going to do a lot of adoration and a lot of prayer in front of Jesus last week. But honestly, it just didn't really happen because my mom and Sean were here, my brother. And in the end, I didn't want to go sit in adoration for hours because I should be here with them. They're here for me. So this was the first time I've really sat in front of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but I like asking him some, qu <laughs> some questions and hope that he's going to give me some answer. I kept saying, Lord, is this yours? This idea, this thing that keeps coming into my head, is this you? Crickets. Again, is this you, crickets? Is this you, cricket, 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 cricket? So I'm like, all right. <laughs> Apparently, you're not going to answer me today. So I just sat there, you know, I was on and off praying the rosary. And on the off times, I was asking the question and waiting for the answer that usually comes through my body. And I got nada. And that's okay. I mean, how bold of me to blatantly ask. But that's me. He knows me. And then I feel on my heart, come prostrate yourself in front of me. Now there's Catholics listening. There's Christians listening. There's non-religious people listening. They may not even know what the word prostrate means. So it's when you lay on the front of your body, on your belly, you throw your arms out to the side like you are a cross and you put your forehead down on the floor. I have never done this. Not in front of Jesus, not away from Jesus. I've never done this. So I asked, do you want me to do it now? Guess what? He answered me with that bodily sensation. And I just got up 
And I walked in front of him and I put myself down on the floor. There's three other people in the adoration room with me. I put my forehead down on the floor, the dirty rug, and I just started bawling uncontrollably. Every muscle in my body was erect. I was, oh, I was just one big muscle. And I was bawling. My tears were just saturating the carpet. And then everything relaxed. My butt muscles, my thigh muscles, my feet even kind of turned out to the side where the ankles relaxed. My arms were completely like limp. I melted into the ground, but my head was up. My nose, the tip of my nose was on the carpet. I couldn't feel my neck. I didn't have a muscle that I could feel that was flexed to keep my head off of the carpet. How is my head suspending here with my nose touching the carpet and not flat on my face if I have no muscle movement? The tears stopped. Total peace. And then he put on my heart Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. How beautiful. I stayed there for probably 15 seconds and then somebody else came into the, cha the, to the chapel and it kind of disrupted me. And so I kind of came out of this relaxed state, you know, like my mind was, I was fighting with this probably healing that was happening to me on that floor. I equate it to resting in the spirit when the Holy Spirit comes over you to a point where your body is rendered limp, sometimes paralyzed. This was more of a limp thing, but I never moved a muscle. And I seriously do not know how my head was hanging off the floor with my nose just touching it. And all my tears were gone. I have to share this because time and adoration is special. And if you've never been, you can search Catholic Adoration Chapel. I don't care if you're Catholic or not. I don't care if you even believe in God. Go sit in front of Jesus and you will know that's him. He will show himself to you beyond that host. I've said this before. It's impossible to sit in front of the sun, S-U-N, for any length of time. I was in there for 45 minutes. If I was sitting out in, in the sun, especially right now with me being as white as I am from the winter, I would get burned. You would see an impact on me. It's the same way with the sun, S-O-N, of God. There's no way that you can sit in front of him. In adoration or in any Catholic church, Jesus is in the tabernacle. The tabernacle is a box, a little house, typically gold. Hopefully it's in the center of your parish and not hidden somewhere. It may be to the left, maybe to the right. But that's Jesus. There's always a red light next to him. It's red glass and there's a candle inside. Always keep Jesus lit in light. So just walk into a Catholic church and sit down in front of the altar, probably right behind it, is Jesus. Same thing. And if the church is locked, don't be shy. Walk in to the office. Ask them to open it. I don't know why people lock their churches. Jesus is in there. Come on, let's open it for all of us who want to be healed. I don't know what God is doing here, but I am telling you, I think everything that I am experiencing is for the benefit of us all.
This has nothing to do with me anymore. He's just using me to talk to you, I think. And I'm just going to go along for the ride, man. I think this is the most incredible thing. That God can do amazing miracles in your life. He can talk to you in ways that you would never imagine. And it's all about prayer. It's all about building that relationship with him. So if this is still something that you guys are struggling with, I'm not selling my prayer program, but I'm telling you I have one. So if you go to my website, KendraVonEsch.com, go to my Faith Services tab, or actually in the description of this podcast, it's in there too. It's Go Deep. 40 days of prayer, love, and grace. Yeah, it's Lent. I know Lent has already started. It doesn't matter. (laughs) You probably need some help. I know I did. Continue to seek him. His goodness, his voice. Pay attention. And let yourself be guided by the Holy Spirit. I've never prostrated myself before. I was telling a friend of mine, who's one of my besties on the spiritual journey, about what happened. And she said, oh my gosh, and then those three people that were in there were praying for you. And it never even occurred to me. I I responded back in a text. I'm like, oh my gosh, I never even thought of that. And she's like, LOL, what else would they do? You're down there sobbing, (laughs) you know, and I got more prayers just... Not that I was looking for them, but I'm just like, how many more prayers can I get? How many more graces can God pour out on me? How many more ways can he use me to help you keep going to him and know that these things are waiting for you too? Oh, okay. Oh, I just looked down. It was 12, 12. <laughs> There's a significance to that that you people don't even know. And I will tell you one day. 12, 12, that may be my new thing with God. Huh. All right, everyone, let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, Heavenly Father, Jesus, our Savior, and Holy Spirit, the Sanctifier, Holy Trinity, come into everyone's heart who is listening. Help them know your voice. Help them feel your prompting. Most importantly, help them feel your love and that you're there every step through this journey. Lord, please bless every person that's listening so that they know you're there. Give them consolation. Give them peace. Guardian angel, please guide us and lead us and protect us. Mary, take our left hand. Holy Spirit, take our right. Walk us on this journey to Jesus where we can be free from anxiety and fear and worry and resentment and selfishness and be free from all of those strongholds that hold us down Keep us from being the most kind, generous, patient, loving person that God created us to be. Help us walk in your path, and when we fall, turn and run toward you, not away. Because your love as a Heavenly Father is more than we could even handle. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. What a ride. So glad you're riding it with me because I'd be talking to no one. I would be shouting this out to the world and no one would be listening. This is for you. (laughs) This stuff can be happening in your life. If we're just tuned in, 
if we just spend that time, I'm going to tell you one more thing. I was talking to my mom about it. I came out talking to her all about my healing yesterday, which she's been praying, praying, praying for that to end up happening eventually. And I was sharing the whole thing with her. Okay, this is going to come to, <laughs> to a surprise, maybe. I totally forgot what I was about ready to say about my mom. And I pushed pause. And I've been thinking. I've been casting out the spirit of memory loss and confusion and distraction. And I cannot seem to remember what I wanted to share. Huh. Go figure. It'll probably come to me and I'll come share it at another time. Now I can give you some time back. Only about 15 minutes, not bad for me today, considering this bad boy is supposed to be 10. <laughs> ah, again, I'm so blessed to be walking with you. I am not alone, and neither are you. Super excited to be walking this Lent with you, and I'm still not able to remember. I'm trying to think while I'm talking. Not happening. Okay. <laughs> find something more with God. Maybe your thought or the thing that you were thinking of. Ah, and have a blessed and inspired day. I love you.